Okay, so someone asked me the other day, they said, if I have a vector uh, and I want to find the magnitude and the direction angle, how do I do that? And so I thought this would be a fun video to do. Um, I, I think this is a real basic problem. It's something that's really, really important that people know how to do if you're going to go into physics, engineering, anything that's uh, math applications. And uh, I also ask questions like this in some of my math courses. And so it's really important that people uh, know how to do this type of problem. So um, first of all, when you see a vector and you've got these, I call them pointy brackets, okay? These little pointy brackets. That tells you it's a vector. Okay, that tells you that you've been given a vector, and uh, specifically it tells you that you've been given this vector in component form. Component form, um, I tell people, is, is very much like if you have a city street and you've got blocks that go north-south and you've got blocks that go east-west. This gives you directions based on that layout. So you're going to go seven blocks this way and 24 blocks this way. Okay, uh, It's very much like an ordered pair. You're going to go seven to the right and down 24. This is telling you if you start at the origin how to go in an XY fashion to get to the end of this vector. Okay, Magnitude is more like as the crow flies. So if you had an airplane or a helicopter or whatever which direction would you fly in and how far would you fly if you didn't want to go 7 and 24. So if you understand that relationship, if you understand what this is telling you, then you know really what you have is this right here. You have 7 and you have negative 24. Okay, that's you. Okay, and that's called component form. And the magnitude is going to be this guy right here, okay? And we write it that way. Uh, and depending on, some books use a double vertical bar, some books use a single vertical bar. Um, I, I like the double vertical bar for magnitude because it doesn't get confused with absolute value. Um, but this is the resultant or the magnitude of vector u. And if you look very closely, if this is in the x direction and this is in the y direction, these are going to meet at a 90 degree angle. And so really, when you're dealing with vectors, you're dealing with a right triangle. And so the magnitude of this vector is just the hypotenuse. Well, uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So in my case, it's going to be what? 7 squared plus negative 24 squared equals... Uh, Let's just call it c squared for now. Um, but it's going to equal the magnitude of my vector. Okay. Well, we know 7 squared is 49. Uh, and 24 squared is, a, is a 576. And so we're going to have 576 plus 49, which is going to be 625. Okay. And you're going to take the square root of that. And that's going to give you 25. Okay, and that is this guy, 25. And typically vectors are going to have um, units. Not always, but typically they're going to have some sort of unit. And so a lot of times we'll talk about this as u equals 7 comma negative 24, and it'll be in pounds. It'll have some, some unit with it, pounds, kilograms. It could be speed. Um, typically vectors represent things like that. But, but the magnitude of a vector really is just the hypotenuse of the right triangle. So component form is the legs. It's A and B in Pythagorean's theorem. And then the, the magnitude, this guy, uh, U double bar, the magnitude of U, is just the hypotenuse. Now, the direction angle, that's the other thing we were asked for, is typically going to be, if you think of an xy coordinate plane, so this is x and this is y, is going to be theta. It's going to be theta. Uh, and of course, this angle here inside the right triangle would be theta prime. And um, so we want to find this direction angle. Well, if I look at this angle here, here's the opposite, here's the adjacent, they were given to me. Uh, so I say, okay, I could write an equation for that. Tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. And that means theta is going to equal the inverse tangent of uh, negative 24 over 7. 
Okay, well let me type that in and see what we get. Negative 24 over 7, inverse tangent of that. And I get theta equals negative 73.7 degrees. Now, um, typically with direction angle, this is not an acceptable answer. Typically, our direction angle needs to be, um, not always, but typically. Let me get a different color to write this in. Typically, theta is from 0 to 360 degrees, somewhere in that realm, uh, 0 to 360. This is outside of that realm, so I need to find uh, an angle that satisfies this from 0 to This negative 73.7 fits inside of my right triangle. It actually goes this way, okay? I need to find this angle here from the positive x-axis around this way. Well, that number plus 73.7 is going to total to 360. So if I want to, so this is theta prime actually. So if I want to find theta, it's going to be 360 minus 73.7 degrees. Okay, and so theta is actually going to be 286. Point three degrees, okay, 286.3 degrees. So, um, magnitudes 25, direction angles 286.3, um, and one of the ways I keep up with this is if you were to go right 7 down 24, that's in quadrant 4 which means you need an angle that's where? Somewhere between 270 and 360, right? And this fits that window. So th that makes sense based on the original information. And, you know, um, so, so just something to keep in mind when you're working with vectors that really and truthfully, component form is an X, Y layout. So X comma Y layout. And then these guys are, if you go back to this original drawing, the hypotenuse and the direction angle. Okay, so it's really just a right triangle problem, something that you would learn early in a trig class. So if you have any questions about that, please let me know.